Hey, hi everybody, it's Mark. All right, so I'm gonna try things a little bit differently this time. I'm gonna have my webcam on for this video. Um, and the reason I'm gonna do is because I wanna keep this video a little bit less formal. Um, this is not a video that I'm making for a specific feature of Data Factory that I'm gonna to upload to our formal documentation sites. Instead, I want to be able to uh, walk you through how to build something from scratch. Uh, in this case, it's very particular. It's about how to implement moving average. And I felt like a more informal kind of presentation and seeing me as uh, I talk with you and walk you through would be helpful. Please let me know in the comments whether or not it is. If it isn't, I shall turn off the uh, webcam for the future sort of videos along this line. I want to sort of separate the more formal uh, videos needed for documentation from these kind of sort of almost challenges where, you know, how do I do something in um, data factory or in data flows? And I'll show you how to do it. And in this case, this is going to be moving average. So moving average was asked for by quite a few customers and it's really simple to implement in data factory or Azure Synapse Analytics with data flows. I'm going to show you today will work in data flows. It doesn't matter if it's data factory or Synapse Analytics, but moving average is not built in. It's something you have to use the window transformation for. All right, so let's go ahead and let's, let's get started. Now on my screen, you do see that I already have a moving average built. This is the sample and I will share with you in the description, the template for this working um, pipeline and the working uh, data flow behind it. This is all you need to do what you see on my screen to do a moving average. In fact, the select transformation there is just extra and I'll explain to you why, but we're gonna build this from scratch. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do this. Just cleaned up a little and now let's create a brand new data flow for moving average. So I'm going to go new data flow. If you're in ADF, it's under factory resources. If you're in Synapse Analytics, it'll be under the develop uh, section of your workspace. Okay, now the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need a data file to work with to follow along in this in this demo, in this video. The scenario that I got to show you um, how to do uh, moving average came from an article that I found on SQL Server Central. So the reason why I looked here is because I felt like moving average is similar in a lot of ways to how you would implement it in data flows, very similar to how you would do it in T-SQL and a SQL Server because there isn't a necessarily built-in um, moving average in either of those tools, Dataflow or um, T-SQL, but it's very easy to implement with the window transformation. So uh, uh, perhaps you've used T-SQL with the window in the past to do something similar. And so this would be a good example. And it's also kind of show you how you would migrate code from T-SQL into Dataflow. So you get kind of, you know, a couple of benefits out of this video, hopefully. So the author of this is, uh, I believe the name is Archana, and I'll put a link to uh, get the full citation for you in the description for the video. But I felt like it was a really great representation of what you would do. In this case, um, the author is taking uh, data from a website called Quandle that has that allows you to export a CSV of a um, stock price. And so we took uh, the author took the Microsoft stock price over time by day, the, the closing uh, really focus on the closing price. It was going to give you a 15-day um, average across that going seven days before, seven days after the current date, that's the current row in the data. And the way to implement that in T-SQL is to write essentially this statement right here. Uh, and you build your over clause, you're creating your aggregation, which is an average, and then you're selecting the columns that you want. Virtually the exact same thing is done in Dataflow, and I'll show you how to break that down, decompose it, and then construct it in Dataflow. So the link to how to get the data, I will also add to the description. You, you get the data as a CSV, now, obviously the author here is, was using SQL Server, using T-SQL, so the data is stored in a table. For us, because we're using Data Factory in this case, see, same thing would work in Synapse Analytics. I just happen to be working in Data Factory for my data flow. We're just gonna work with the data in the lake as a CSV. I don't need to put it into a database. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's build this now in uh, data flow. Blank brand new data flow. And when you build this, you're gonna wanna call this moving average. I already have one called moving average, or if you download my template, uh, it'll be called moving average. I'm gonna just got, I'm gonna go ahead and call it moving average two, just so it has a unique name. So now you're going to take that Quando file with the Microsoft stock prices in it, uh, the daily prices, and you're going to download it and then put it into your storage account, upload that into your storage account in Azure. And I already did that, and you're gonna to want to then make a data set. 
out of it, which I already also did. So the data set is going to be, in my case, in my blob store. It could be in ADLS if you prefer, but it's going to be a text limited file. It's a CSV file. I called my data set Microsoft Stock. Because it's a delimited text file, the projection looks like this. Uh, we have a few columns in there, not too many. And they're all seen as string because it is simply just comma delimited. There is no richness or there's no schema saved in a CSV file. So the first thing I'm going to do, making sure my data flow debug session is on, I'm going to uh, click on detect data type. So once we click on detect data type, uh, now we can uh, ask ADF to sample that uh, data and look at that file, the CSV, and be able to try and determine the data types of those columns so that we can have some richness around the data. It's going to be important when we start doing some uh, work with dates in the window transformation for uh, moving average as well as being important to how we would produce that average so we need to have the right data types you can always set these manually if you like but we can infer the, the data types for you um, and data flows as well so we have a date column that's great and we also have double for the numeric columns and it'll be just fine all right so let's just name the source something interesting let's call it uh, source stock that sounds fine now, pretty much the next thing we need to do is we need to build the window transformation. But before I do, there's one uh, nuance about the way that the window transformation works at scale inside of Spark that is a little bit different than what you can see in T-SQL. So what we have to do is we need to use, in this case, all of the data within that data set within that file because we need to go from top to bottom and find the moving average across 15 days throughout. It's not just a single window or sliver of data we're going to work with. We're going to work at, with different windows and move that window as we go row to row. So we need to look at the entire set of data and to do that we need to have a column that has a value in it that is dis that is not distinct, that is actually the same across all of that data. And if you look at the uh, data in here, let's actually do it, uh, have a data preview on that data. While it's cooking, we can look at the inspect just to see that there's not a column in here that is going to be guaranteed to be the same across all of these. So that's a requirement for working in data flows and having the window transformation work at scale in Spark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, before I do that, I'm going to just make sure that we have a look at the data so you can see what the data looks like. But I'm going to actually create a column that contains a value that is common across all of these. All right, just to make sure that we have that. So we see the date, we have the open, high, low, and close. We're only going to be interested in close. We're only going to get the average of close. Um, the, the closing price. Now, my data in my file is going to have slightly different uh, dates than the sample in the article that I'm linking to. So we can't necessarily compare the results, but we can see that the code is going to do the same thing and the code will essentially have the same features to it. So let's go ahead and create that common value. So I'm going to create a, a column by using a derived column. I'm going to call it as um, set stock name. So let's go ahead and create a new column, just call it stock, and I'm going to call it, I'm going to set it for, to a value of MSFT. This way we know that we are working with just Microsoft. And that gives us that guaranteed common value across all the rows. So when, I ha when I set my window now, I can pick that stock column here. And now I know that it's going to have uh, a look at the entire set of data. Okay, that's great. But what we want to actually work with when we build the over clause, let me go back to the article, the over clause is going to look at um, the date. It's going to order the date. So it's going to sort it. Okay, so let's do the sorting right here. We're going to do the ordering. We're going to say date, and we'll have ascending. Now the range. The range, if you remember here back on the article again, is seven before, seven after, plus the current. So that's 15 days. So what I'll do is I'm going to say the, the range is actually bounded. It's not going to be unbounded, which is the default. And we want to look seven days behind. So we drag that to bound and we say seven and look ahead seven days. So I move that to in front and call that seven. Now, the other interesting thing you can do here in the window transformation and data flows is that because this, um, the column that we're looking at, the data that we're looking at is a, a date time field, we can do this. We can always range by column value and we can say seven days. So there's a little bit of time intelligence built into the uh, transformation based on the data type. That's why I was one of the reasons why it was important to detect the, the data types earlier. But because I'm just making this match up with what we see in the existing T-SQL article, I'm just going to leave it as rows for now. Okay, so now we want to uh, perform the aggregation, which is an average of close. We're going to call it a 15-day mob average 
Let's see if I can get that right. So under window columns, that's where we do that. So we call it 15 average. Did I get that right? 15 day mov average, not mod, mov for moving average. Okay, there we go. The expression is real simple. It's just going to be average. And we're going to do an average of the, um, the actual closing value of the stock that day. So we just call it close. I don't actually recall if close was capitalized. It might be. So I'm going to go into the expression builder so I can use the IntelliSense. Or I can just find it here and see the yeah, it is capital C. So we'll just make it a capital C and our squiggly goes away and our syntax checks. And that's it because you only need to say average. The rest of the time uh, and the moving average, the moving window will be uh, will be done by data factory with the window. Now, one thing you're going to see that, that I forgot to do when we see the results here in this initial data preview of our logic is that I didn't beautify that at all. So I just left it as an average. So it's going to be, you know, the average may not look the way you want it to for a report or for an output. So when this comes back, I'll show you that and then we'll do a round on it to make it look a little bit better. In fact, when we look at the article that we're using as the reference here, um, the author did not round those. So you get those kinds of outputs, which is what I'm talking about. So let's look at the values that we got. The other thing too is the, uh, there's still all the original columns. So the one other piece left for us to implement is the select as well. Um, so there is the values that looks right. It is a running, uh, moving average. That, that looks to be what we're looking for. Everything looks fine there. Let's do something now. Let's do two things. Let's fix up that value a little bit, even though that's not in the article. It just kind of sets me off a little bit, make me feel a little better if we make it nicer. So we'll just do a quick round right in here in line. We'll say round, round to two places. And then uh, let's also do the select. The select was just selecting date, close, and average. All right, that's fine. So we'll add a select onto the end here. Select is right here as a schema modifier because we're going to change the schema. And we said date, close. Let's get all these guys out of here. That one, that one. Stock, we don't need. There you go. Date, close, and 15 day move average. I have three E's in my moving. Uh, let's fix that. That kind of bugs me. Uh, so we did that here in the window transformation. Team day move average. There we go. Let's take a look at what we got. That should be exactly what we're looking for. And um, if you if you build this along with me, that's great. Um, this is really just in, in data preview debug mode. You'll want to add a sync to the end if you want to put that uh, as sort of persistent results somewhere in the database table or in storage. And uh, if you don't want to have to um, rebuild this, I, I will link to a template that has the already completed code in it that you can just install and import into your factory. Now notice the date changes because this is sampling data and it's looking data across a wide range. You can control that a couple of different ways. You can add a sort right in here if you wanted to um, sort those results to see just the latest or the, or the earliest dates. In addition to that, if you go to debug settings, you can allow more rows in. The, the default limit is 1000 for when you're debugging. And I'm um, just leaving it at that just so I can show you. And then notice that the moving average looks a lot better now. All right, that's it. Informal video, how to build something called the moving average. Hopefully seeing me while doing it helped. If not, please give me the comments. I'll be more than happy to not use the webcam. But uh, glad that you were here with me to see how to do it. Thanks for watching.